The text that we'll be looking at today comes from Psalm 33. And while this psalm does not have a clear author, it does have a very clear message. And that message is to give praise unto God for who he is and for what he's done. If you have your Bible with you, please open to Psalm 33 and follow along as I read aloud. This is the word of the Lord. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all of their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap, and he puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all of their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army, and a warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. Amen. Behold the cross In a similar way, though, I wonder how many of us today are putting our hope in something that's deceiving us. Have we made certain things in our life strongholds that are not meant to be so? Or have we put in our, fault, our hope in false treasures? This psalm is declaring to God's people that we need not hope in anything other than the steadfast love of God, and that God alone is deserving and worthy of our trust. The work of your power. God, so good. Some of you already know that I love fly fishing. And one of the parts I love most about the sport is the opportunity to wade through the stream, to feel the cool of the water on my feet, and to watch the water and listen to it rush around the rocks. And if I can personify water for a moment, it's amazing to me that it knows exactly where to go. There's a sort of consistency when it comes to the water's flow. The edges of the shore direct its movement downstream. And while there are times of flood, which I might add are not fun to be wading through, for the most part, the stream always flows with the sort of order to it. And I think something even as simple as the water flowing downstream reveals something of the steadfast love of the Lord to us. As a people who know this God, we can have confidence that he is faithful, and he demonstrates his love for structure and order in something as simple as the stream's flow. 
I remember when I was younger, I was fascinated with burning things using a magnifying glass. I'd get a magnifying glass and hold it so the sun's beams would shine through it in a way that concentrated the light and caused whatever object I had underneath it to catch fire. Don't worry, I really only um, caught fire to leaves and occasionally ants. While the sun shone on everything around me, it had a particular concentrated attention on the object under my magnifying glass. And similarly, while the eye of the Lord is upon the whole earth, his eye particularly looks out for those who fear him. Listen to verse 18 and 19 once more. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. This morning, I want to call us to remember that it is God and God alone who has directed his beams of love upon your heart. In these verses, the steadfast love of the Lord is demonstrated through his protection as our help and our shield. Earlier in the movie, Troy, I enjoyed watching the scene depicting Achilles and his men as they huddled together and placed their shields in what's known as testudo formation. I hope I'm saying that right. But basically, this formation would create a barrier between the men and their attackers. Whether it be from arrows or spears or any impending attacks, the men would congregate together and push their shields up um, next to one another in order to create a wall between them and their attackers. And I think this is a beautiful picture of the Lord's love for his church. Although the world continues in hostility towards God and his people, we can actually be glad and are commanded to be hopeful knowing that our Heavenly Father is in control. For many of us, though, this seems all too easy to place our hope in other things, including ourselves. We have heard the promises of God, but it's difficult to actively trust in the Lord. So I ask you all this morning, I ask myself, what are our false shields of help and of hope? What have we given our hearts to that might not actually hold up when the cares of this world start weighing down on us? Today, this psalm invites us to remember the promises of God and to put our trust in Him. like a hurricane I am 